All right, everybody in Facebook land. If uh, you are there, we are going to start here in a second. Just getting things set up. And also if people in Facebook land, if you know what type of bird that is, go ahead and type it in the uh, comment section. And we'll see if anybody gets it. All right. This is the thing with technology, right? It's like you got to get everything lined up just perfectly. <laughs> All right, here we go. So good morning, everybody. My name is Dave Celebrezzi, Green Spot Coordinator. Welcome to another Green Spot Conversations. We have an exciting topic to talk about today, the health of the Olentangy River. Uh, how many times have you been to the Olentangy River or do you even see the river? Uh, I see it pretty much on a daily basis and it's just really cool to see. And I, I do wonder like, well, how is the health of it? I know there's a lot of activity going on and we're gonna dive into that. But before we do, I wanna give a shout out to the Green Spot Advisory Board. They're the ones that came up with the idea for the Green Spot Conversations and they help us come up with ideas to uh, explore. And so these conversations are meant to really be an overview of a, a topic of sustainability and enough to pique your interest to dive in maybe a little bit later on that particular uh, topic. We've done about 11 of these so far. They're on the GreenSpot website. If you're not a GreenSpot member, it's free to join and you can join by going to columbusgreenspot.org. And uh, basically you make commitments to go green. One of those commitments is actually enjoying, you know, being out in a city park or uh, county uh, uh, metro park on a, like three or four times a month, something like that. We also have uh, commitments that you can make of like picking up litter and all things like that. So before we jump into the old Angie and take the plunge, I wanna talk a little bit real quick about Green Spot. So Green Spot fits in uh, with the city's sustainable Columbus efforts. It's one of the uh, goals is to reach 40,000 members by 2030. And the vision of um, the sustainable Columbus is to be carbon neutral by 2050 to have 100% uh, renewable energy through community aggregation and to really improve our neighborhoods with clean air, clean water and um, opportunities to green space. All that together kind of means sustainability is when you have environment, the economy and equity all moving in the same direction. That's when you really have sustainability. And if you've heard me talk about this before, you know I'll say that's when we really thrive as a community. So it's taken it one step further than sustainability. With Green Spot. Uh, you could kind of read the slide there uh, where we are in our numbers uh, and people and, and uh, groups involved with our Green Spot neighborhoods. I encourage folks to join. Again, it is free to join. Here is a little bit of our collective savings in our Green Spot universe. This is the reported savings. We know that uh, not everything that our members are doing is being reported, but uh, as you can see, the numbers are pretty significant. When you think you're only, you know, your actions don't make a difference, when you multiply that by 21,000 uh, people, they do make a difference. All right, so uh, for the main event here, so we have the health of the Olin Tangi. It is a really big topic. You know, it's kind of a big river, it's a big topic. Um, and just curious again, how many folks have uh, been out to the Olin Tangi? Maybe you pass the Olin Tangi on 315 South, 315 North. You know, maybe it's maybe you uh, kayaked uh, the Olentangy. Uh, it's something that really is part of the lifeblood of the community. Uh, and it does have its challenges, you know, it's, it's, but there are a lot of efforts that are going on that we're gonna hear about that are to help protect it and kind of judge the, or not really judge, but to, to uh, figure out what, where is the health of the Olentangy right now. So today we have represent, representatives from the Friends of the Lower Olentangy Watershed or FLOW for short, uh, Laura Fay, she is the chairwoman of Flo's Science Committee, and Flo is a watershed group devoted to making the Olentangy and its tributaries clean and safe for all to enjoy. And Flo is known for rain barrel education, tree planting, litter cleanup service events, and advocacy. And just overall, a really cool organization if you're not familiar with them. So Laura previously worked at the Ohio State University Center for Lake Erie Area Research as the chief scientist on research vessel Hydra. She has also worked at the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency, Ohio Department of Natural Resources, and the Ohio Department of Health in various jobs related to water, uh, water quality. Uh, she has a Bachelor of Science 
and her master's of science from the Ohio State University. And Laura, thank you for being here. <laughs> Thanks, and Dave. And I also, before I turn it over to Laura, I want to do a quick introduction here of uh, Jim Pallas. Uh, he is also with Flow. He's a restoration ecologist with the Nature Conservancy. Uh, he's working with the Ohio Mitigation Program to restore streams and wetlands throughout Ohio. And he serves on the Flow Board to implement restoration projects throughout the Lower Olentangy watershed. So, Jim, it's great to have you here as well. Thanks for having me. All right, Laura, I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm going to mute myself and just let me know when you want me to advance the slides. Okay, great. Thank you. And uh, thanks everyone for your interest in the Olentangy watershed. And I'm just going to give you a quick uh, basics of uh, the characteristics of the Olentangy and some of the uh, flow's big accomplishments. And then Jim's going to get into our current efforts and flow. Uh, Next slide, Dave, uh, is a nonprofit uh, group uh, with a mission to keep the Olentangy River and all our tributaries. And you'll see later how many we have. It's a lot. Um, but to keep those clean and safe for people to enjoy. And uh, we do all kinds of activities. And uh, there's a lot of different characteristics or, or the river looks a lot different in different places. So I encourage you to get out and see as much as you can. Uh, this whitewater kayaking you're seeing is actually in the Olentangy. Uh, it's up in the uh, scenic river portion and the water is high. So not necessarily safe kayaking normally, but, um, um, but anyway, and then that waterfall is also part of the Olentangy. So next slide. So, um, this is a, a map showing you the 5 counties that uh, the Olentangy is in and every drop of rain that falls in this watershed ends up at the mouth of the Olentangy in uh, downtown Columbus at Confluence Park restaurant. And so that's 88 and a half miles of river and. Also, that whole area encompasses 565 square miles of drainage. So uh, that means like the heavy rain we're expecting tonight is going to end up with a lot of water, uh, you know, passing through the Olentangy, uh, potential flooding, which is why we want active floodplain. Um, but our headwater starts in the highlands of Richard, Richland County, there at the north, almost near Bucyrus. And then everything north of that actually flows to Lake Erie. So uh, everything south is coming down to Columbus and then is going to join there in Columbus with the Scioto River and then the Mississippi and get out to the Gulf of Mexico. And most of our upper watershed uh, was uh, agriculture. It's becoming less so. Uh, and then the southern part is very urbanized. Next slide. So this is showing you um, sort of watershed addresses. These different color greens are called HUCs or hydrologic unicodes. And uh, the portion of the watershed that flow deals with is that lighter green in the south from Delaware uh, down to the confluence. We call that the lower Olentangy. Um, <clears throat> and uh, but we care about everything north. We just don't have uh, time to cover all of that area, but we have partners in the north called the Olentangy Watershed Alliance. And um, this breakdown done by the USGS allows us to be scientific in, in our calculations and, and strategy about where we place uh, projects. Next. <laughs> These are called our watershed fast facts or fun facts, but uh, we uh, had a green space uh, planning project that Jim's gonna talk more about. And um, this is just sort of a rough inventory of everything we have. Our watershed size is 157 square miles. And then that acreage, there's 640 acres per square mile. But we have 35 miles of river, uh, we have uh, 400 miles of tributary. We have 369 tributaries or sub watersheds. Each one of those has its own watershed that we can plan 
uh, projects for. And then you see our wetlands, lakes, ponds, and um, sadly, we only have 20% canopy. Uh, American Forest recommends a 40% canopy for healthy humans and 60% for healthy uh, waters. So um, we would like to increase that. And then protected lands, um, this is parks, cemeteries, um, green space or open space. It's not all you know, treat and natural, but we only have 9%. And America, or I'm sorry, the Trust for Public Land has identified the national average for the 100 largest cities is 15%. So we need to increase that amount. Next slide. Um, so here, this shows you a bit of the terrain of the um, Olentangy, and we have five major north-south uh, streams in central Ohio, and these were formed during glaciation. So we have some, the Olentangy is fairly narrow, kind of like a finger, and, you know, in some of those narrower spots, it might only be four miles wide, um, but uh we, we still have a lot of turf to <laughs> work on and repair. So from Delaware Dam to Scioto, two counties, um, 22 miles are state scenic river. And some of those are not quite as scenic as they used to be because um, uh, ODOT is working on the Olentangy and putting in pilot walls and things like that to prevent State Route 315 from sliding and things like that. So. Uh, we have a lot of uh, a lot to do, and also Delaware County is the fastest growing. So, the part that was scenic and exceptional warm water habitat up in Delaware is uh, potentially of concern. We need to keep our eye on it, and make sure it stays safe. Next slide. So uh, the Olentangy River um, provides drinking water, uh, not for us in Franklin County, but um, Delco Water. And uh, Delco Water is uh, maybe the fourth or fifth biggest drinking water system in the state. So uh, they get some from the Olentangy, some from the Saito, and some from others. But it uh, provides water for agriculture. Uh, lots of recreational opportunities, um, hiking, biking, uh, a lot, great bird watching were part of the migration pathway. And it is a uh, important for uh, wildlife diversity and um, we're trying to protect that corridor and make sure the ecological services are high so they can support them. And then conveyance for stormwater, right? That's mother nature's way of moving water. And uh, we have lost a lot of floodplain because people have built there and um, that's where we want the flooding to go as opposed to people's property. And then the aesthetic value, you can go out and get a beautiful picture almost every day in the Olentangy. Next slide. So um, this is showing you the original vegetation in the Olentangy River Basin, and that green is uh, basically uh, hardwood forest, uh, primarily beach. And then the um, uh, elm and ash is purple. And then the sugar maple is orange. So we used to be highly uh, beachy here. And um, uh, and we've changed it. We've cut a lot uh, to make room for man. And uh, the picture on the right is showing you more like what it looked like maybe in the 70s or 80s. Next slide. You there, Dave? Oh, okay. So our big accomplishments uh, as a nonprofit group, uh, our goal is to educate people so that they can help protect. You know, we just have nine board members and um, some committees. We have some paying members, but uh, we're we're just trying to be the ripple that makes the change. So we do that through education, outreach, advocacy, and projects. Next slide. Um, education, our biggest program was backyard conservation. Uh, there was a manual um, or handbook, I should say, it's not that big, but um, prepared in about 2004. We 
did a lot of rain barrel work and talked about natives and uh, water harvesting and composting. And that is on the flow webpage still. And then we've had different phases of monitoring programs of our streams, um, helping us uh, identify what we have and then to also um, target where we need projects to uh, improve or preserve the biological diversity we have. Next slide. Uh, this is another one of our education programs, uh, Clean Water Pledge. This was back in 2010. Uh, giving people ideas, an extension of our backyard conservation, but this could be um, in your basement or garage or in your kitchen, in your laundry room. And we asked ask people to fill out these pledges and let us know what they were going to do to help us protect the Olin Tangy. So. <clears throat> uh, this is the picture that's on the cover of our um, backyard conservation handbook and uh, very <laughs> old version of a rain barrel here. Uh, you'll see a lot of these still in Clintonville, though. They're totally functional, and they um, that screen keeps the mosquitoes out, and uh, uh, they work just fine. Uh, we had a lot of workshops. Uh, we also uh, gave out some composters and did composting workshops. Uh, we've installed rain gardens, created a lot of wildlife habitat, and um, there was the education program about organic yard care. Next, next slide is uh, residential rain gardens. We uh, considered this a method for rainwater harvesting. And instead of a two dimensional rain gar or a garden that you're used to, this is actually three dimension that you can see in the um, picture in the bottom left. Um, you calculate what you're uh, draining, the roof or whatever the driveway that's going to be drained here and then you check your soils and if you need to you amend the soil so that the water is infiltrated so it's really a three-dimensional garden and a lot of the plants are deep roots and they help infiltrate water which we really like because that allows it to get to the groundwater and slowly make it way its way to the river which gets us cooler, cleaner water in our tributaries. And th that cooler, cleaner water supports the mussels and the darters that are very sensitive to pollution. Next slide. Next slide. Dave? Yeah, it's there. I don't know if you could see it or not. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. Um, Yes, I can. I'm sorry. So uh, outreach, uh, we uh, worked with the city of Columbus to designate the Olentangy as a water trail. We also um, worked on stream naming. Uh, so we have, as you saw, 369 tributaries. Not all of those have names and we want people to sort of have a name for their watershed, their stream, so that you know, they can fall in love with it and call it something besides an unnamed trip. So uh, I'll show you something about that. And then volunteering, uh, trying to get people to realize we need their help to do all this work. Next slide. Okay, so uh, with the city of Columbus, they designated uh, the Olentangy as the first water trail in Columbus in 2007. And there's maps that are available, printed maps, and uh, we try and disperse those, but uh, uh, you can get those from Columbus Recreation Parks. We disperse them to some of our local uh, sporting goods stores. Uh, tells you where the access points are, and uh, there's some kiosks and things like that. So that's like nine and a half miles of, I think it's called class one and class two uh, paddling. Next slide. And this is an example of one of the streams that we named and what the signs look like. They're typical ODOT signs, but we went through the USGS uh, geonaming process, and that puts the stream names on the maps and then allows us to put um, signs out uh, if we can. So 
we named about 20 streams back in 2010 and we're working on a couple more right now, but we have a ways to go if anybody wants to help. <laughs> uh, for volunteerism, uh, so stream monitoring, we currently have a program where uh, individuals are going out and looking at macroinvertebrates and with probes, getting temperature information and some basics. Uh, we do a lot of reforestation with seedlings in the spring, and we've been planting bigger trees uh, in the fall at schools, stream corridors, and things like that. Uh, lots of community education and then invasive removal. And uh, this little rainbow darter is our mascot, Robbie the rainbow darter. And we actually have rainbow darters um, in the Olentangy. And this is showing, the middle picture shows you a mussel uh, mussels need clean, clear water. And then this is an Ohio EPA group on the right, helping us with a litter cleanup and that whole truck that is filled with stuff they recovered. So getting out some of the legacy debris and rivers is still ongoing. Next slide. So um, when we talk about advocacy, we talk about reaching out to partners, um, legislators, things like that. Well, watersheds are somewhat confusing because uh, like not an entire county is in our watershed or you know, not an entire city. Um, so there, anyway, there's lots of jurisdictions, lots of outreach and education that needs to be done. Uh, but <clears throat> with our partners, we developed a watershed action plan back in, that got approved back in 2005. Uh, we've advocated for dam removals to improve water quality and also land use and policy. Next slide. Uh, this is just a cover of our watershed action plan. <laughs> it's very long, but it is on our webpage. It's about 450 pages. A uh, lot of great information about the basics of the Olentangy and um, under all these categories that you're seeing here. Uh, basically, it was our roadmap to let us know what to do. And uh, we still use a lot of the things in here to help us, uh, you know, prioritize projects. And we've also had an update. And that's our new green space plan that Jim will talk about. Uh, land use. Um, uh, MORPC, uh, Mid-Ohio Region Planning Commission, did a balanced growth plan for the Olentangy and brought together all our um, jurisdictions. So that was a, a success um, also for flow uh, to help us ensure the um, health of the Olentangy for future generations. So priority um, development and conservation area maps are um, in that document, um, development standards, and then a focus on preserving our um, important sensitive natural resources. Next slide. So uh, this is probably uh, one of the biggest projects in our watershed action plan that we advocated for um, and that was the removal of the Fifth Avenue Dam near Battelle, uh, just south of Columbus or south of OSU campus in Columbus. And uh, upstream of this low head dam, it was about six feet tall. It created a lake, basically, right? Slow moving water, uh, great habitat for carp and uh, instead of our native fish and things like that. So. Uh, Removing that dam improved the water quality. Uh, Ohio EPA says that uh, the macroinvertebrates living there now are um, very good to exceptional. So it's also improved the habitat. Um, at this bend here, it was at least 400 feet wide, um, and not, and a river typically of the you know drainage size I talked about would be about uh, 200 feet wide. So it's been narrowed with floodplain. Um, and it, removing the dam improved the safety um, when these, um, like a flood, like we're going to get, if people are out in the river, it creates a hydraulic effect in that downstream spillway. And if someone would go over that, it's kind of like being in a washing machine. And uh, so they call them drowning pools. Um, so anyway, now the Olentangy is safer as well as healthier. Next slide. 
So we've done a lot of projects over time via grants and things like that, stream restorations, rain garden installations, and uh, as part of our mission education. So here is a picture of some signage at Park Boulevard Park in Worthington um, after we did uh, a stream enhancement. Next slide. So this is uh, the stream restoration of Rush Run. Uh, there was some channel restoration work and then repair and restoration. And you can see volunteers helping us out. And uh, gosh, this was years ago, uh, pre 2008. So, uh, and we've done a lot of projects since then. Next slide. And then rain garden installations is part of the Central Ohio Rain Garden Initiative or CORGI. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, rain gardens. This one you're seeing is at the um, Unitarian Universalist Church on, um, oh my gosh, I forget the name of the street. It's in Clintonville. Um, and we've also done one at Dominion Middle School uh, and some at Liberty Park. Oh, and Clintonville uh, Mennonite Church also. So uh, trying to show people that it's something that's, possible to do and what the benefits are. And it also can be very aesthetic as well. Next slide. So um, this is another one of our big successes. We, uh, with grant funding, did three stream types of restoration um, to Wildcat Run. One was a self-forming channel, one was a floodplain expansion, and one was um, a stream relocation because it had been the stream had been down cut and we wanted to sort of lift it up and connect it with this floodplain. So that's what you're seeing with all those uh, red letters, A, B, and C. Uh, D is a conservation of that whole wooded um, stream area. And then E was a gift sort of from the park where they did about a five acre prairie. And then all the numbers are different stormwater best management practices. So there's signage at this park. You can take a walk and, and see um, some of the details, things like that. So, um, and our goal was to reduce the amount of uh, water from these impervious surfaces. <clears throat> okay, this one uh, is sawmill wetlands and uh, Flo uh, has been working on the restoration uh, since uh, the fall of 2019. And we will be having an event here on August 14th from 10 to 12. And you can come out and get more uh, information about the work we've been doing there. So that's it. I apologize for taking so long. Great. Thank you, Laura. A lot of information. Absolutely. Um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to Jim's presentation here while I do that. I did want to mention that uh, I didn't know that the rainbow darter was found in the Olentangy. I think that's very cool. I hear that that uh, that darter is a lot quicker than the snail darter over in the Derby. So, all right. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jim. Jim, just let me know when you want me to uh, advance the slides. Sure. Thanks. All right. Can you see? Oh, you know what? I think I need to do the whole sharing thing here. It's only been a year and a half doing this, so, you know. <laughs> there we go. Excellent, thanks. Well, thank you for having me, um, and thank you, Laura, for providing all of that background information. So, Laura gave a lot of context into who Flow is and what they do, and um, I, I want to focus a little more on one of our larger efforts over the past few years, which is getting this green space plan um, planned and implemented. So you can advance to the next slide, Dave. Um, Flow has done a lot over the years, as you can see, and it had occurred to us several years ago that with, with all the effort, all the volunteer time, all the grant money that we've been getting, it would behoove us to um, really start to try and strategize beyond our original watershed action plan uh, to focus all of our different projects in areas that are gonna make the most impact and give us the most bang for our buck. 
And as Laura alluded to, um, Delaware County is the fastest growing county in the state. And just in our watershed alone, the population is expected to nearly double by 2050. And historically, the, uh, the density of people doesn't bode particularly well for watershed health. So this is, um, you know, while it's great to see people coming into the area, it's also concerning for, for the watershed. So we wanna try and get out ahead of that as much as we can to do what we can to mitigate those impacts and protect the health of the Olentangy. Before we do that, um, and the first step really is knowing what we already have. And that's where this green space planning effort came into. We needed some sort of baseline inventory. And so Laura um, secured funding through the Columbus Foundation to launch this effort. And you can advance to the next slide, Dave. Um, and really we wanted to, and you can actually advance again. Um, we, we needed to know what was already there uh, throughout the watershed. So we engaged in all the stakeholders we could think of, all the municipalities, uh, the different park districts um, to see what was important to them, what sort of data we needed to collect to uh, know what was where, um, and also to see what they wanted to get out of this. You can advance the slide. Um, and that was a massive part of this project is just collecting all the data. Some, some data sources were pretty readily available through different open source um, uh, programs, um, but a lot were pretty difficult to, to fish out. A lot of things like conservation easements that aren't particularly well documented, things like that. Um, but this turned into a pretty uh, big GIS analysis uh, which is, for those who may not be familiar, it's geographic information systems that um, allow, it, it facilitates kind of modern cartography and analysis of, of geographic data. Um, and we, flow contracted with the Franklin Soil and Water Conservation District to do all this GIS analysis for us. And the first step, as you see here, was mapping all of the hydrology across the watershed like the Olentangy River itself and all the tributaries or streams that drain into it. Um, so you can go to the next slide. Um, that was paired with uh, open source land cover data. So within each of those tributaries, we could uh, analyze what, what sort of quality of land drains to that area. Is it mostly forested, which it would be pretty good for that stream? Is it mostly agriculture, which could lead to a lot of sedimentation and other non-point source pollutants, or is it a lot of impervious surface, um, which causes a lot of stormwater runoff and, and can lead to a lot of downcutting in streams. Um, another thing is uh, looking at lawn and sort of open fields and other non-agricultural uh, open spaces. And it was pretty shocking to see that those made up 38% of the watershed. So people's lawns are are making up a majority of our watershed. And generally that, that's also not great for watershed health. It's a lot of people are fertilizing their lawns. It they do not have a large capacity to absorb stormwater. So a lot of that just flows off. So that's a, a big effort of ours as well as trying to advocate for um, people to convert their lawns to uh, more, more benign land uses. Next slide. Um, and now that we have the, all, all the different streams throughout the watershed and the land cover data, we can start compartmentalizing this data into sub watersheds essentially within the lower Olentangy watershed. And we can look at how, how these different variables change throughout. So this, this, the, these maps are showing that long data layer. Um, and essentially the, the percentage of long, uh, within each sub sub watershed. So on the map on the left, the darker green it is, the less long there is, meaning uh, the the better that the better condition that watershed is in from that standpoint. Um, and you can see a lot of those are further north in the watershed as you get away from urban areas. You can go to the next slide. Uh, another really important 
land land cover is agriculture, and that's primarily in Delaware County where a lot of this development is occurring. So the map on the left shows uh, the highlighted sections in the map show areas that are currently under agricultural production. But the map on the right uh, shows in red uh, all of those agricultural parcels that are actually already owned by developers. So those are going to get developed and you can see how much of that is um, slated for development. So not only is our population going to grow significantly, but a huge amount of land area is going to be converted from agriculture to things like impervious services and lawns that um, are essentially um, uh, the, the not great. <laughs> you can go to the next slide. Uh, and so we also looked at impervious surfaces existing that I mentioned. So you can see um, in the Franklin County portion of the watershed in the map on the left, um, there's a lot of impervious cover, which isn't very surprising. It's the more urbanized portion of the watershed. Um, and there, since it is so urbanized already, our focus is more on stormwater mitigation. There's not a, a huge amount of opportunity to do restoration or, or preservation work in that area. But in Delaware County, um, currently with it being less developed, um, there, there are higher quality habitats that can be protected or, and preserved. Um, and there's, there's just not as much impervious surface. So that, that portion of the watershed is currently in much better health for the Olentangy and plays a big role in why it's such a high quality river to begin with. You can go to the next slide. Um, ultimately, there are a lot of different layers you can peel apart and look at this from different angles. But the, the kind of bottom line of this whole planning effort was creating this scoring system uh, to essentially assign a score to every parcel or every, every piece of the land uh, to be able to understand its value to the river's health. And this took into account things like how much impervious surface it had, how close it was to a stream, whether it had wetlands or any other uh, existing habitats on the property. Um, a lot of different variables went into this, and the scoring system was developed where uh, essentially tier one refers to those highest quality habitats that are going to be most sensitive to disturbance, and tier five are those areas that are usually already developed or otherwise are just low quality. Um, and so th this gives us a really great planning framework to prioritize all of our activities, whether it's tree plantings or invasive species removal, or if it's advocating to local park districts and municipalities to put an easement onto a property. Um, so I'm gonna shift here and uh, I'm pretty much at time now, uh, but I'll quickly go through some of the existing projects that have been kind of informed by this planning effort. So you can go to the next slide. Um, first, uh, the it, to try and remediate the amount of impervious surface we have in our watershed, we have done some projects we refer to as deep paving projects, where we've actually uh, identified er areas of hard surfaces like parking lots that go totally unused. Um, and we've worked with these schools, for example, to remove those and convert them to a better land use, like either a pollinator garden or we plant trees there. Um, so it, it, it's kind of an awesome turnaround where it, it, it's going from a, a surface that's really quite bad for the watershed and we're improving it significantly. Um, but there's a lot more of that that needs to be done to really make a big difference. You can go to the next slide. We also have a project that we've done with ODOT um, as part of their Ohio Pollinator Habitat Initiative. Um, this is what we refer to as the Hudson Prairie. It's located on the on ramp to 71 uh, south, just off of Hudson, along Silver Drive there. There's this area that was they just had maintained as turf grass, um, and they would mow regularly. There's nothing, there is not, it wasn't being used for anything, and they agreed to allow us to install some shorter pollinator plants. And you can go to the next slide. 
Um, we don't actually have any pictures of the before conditions, but this is about the first year after it was seeded shortly after to give you an idea of what the area looked like. Um, so it was a little over a half acre of land that wasn't really serving any purpose. And you can go to the next slide and kind of slowly advance through these, just a series of pictures of what it looks like today, essentially. Um, it has a much greater plant diversity and a lot more structural diversity. The, in, the abundance and diversity of insects using this property now is pretty astounding. Um, so it's a pretty awesome and very, very uh, developed example of, uh, it's a great example of a project in a highly developed area. So now you can go to the next slide. Um, we have another project with the Olentangy Environmental Control Center that is coordinated by uh, our current board chair, who is an en engineer with them. Um, they, they had a large, um, I think maybe a four acre mound that they would just, again, maintain with mowed grass. Um, and they were interested in converting it to a prairie. Um, so this was a great, a great project. It scored high, as you can see, it was tier two because it was right along the old Tangi. It's directly across the river from high banks. There's a lot of high quality habitat around there. So it had all the, the good marks for it high quality restoration projects, you can advance again. Um, and here's roughly what at least part of the area looked like before we did anything. This is a pretty expansive area that was just continuously mowed. And then um, last year, or where these pictures were taken from, um, where the fairy seed mixes started coming up. So again, it's a much more beneficial use. Um, the, the roots of these, uh, Prairie species um, help to uh, facilitate water to drain into the soil much better uh, so that the land itself absorbs a lot more water and there's less runoff essentially. And then um, there may be a few more pictures. So it's a big area, great project. And then finally, um, we have after all of this green space planning effort, Laura secured another uh, grant from the Columbus Foundation for implementing a lot of these projects. So um, again, there are a lot of partners that we have worked with, and this is an active grant that we are continuing to work on um, to implement some larger scale and higher quality projects in some of these areas that score the highest um, the green space plan. Uh, so you can advance to the next slide. Um, our first project was with uh, Delco. They have a floodplain property that is directly uh, along the Olentangy. And uh, they have worked with us to, um, they've given us permission to essentially reforest about five acres of that property. So, um, What's also great is there is a narrow, an existing narrow forested buffer that's along the Olentangy. Uh, but while, while it has some good tree cover, there's also a lot of honeysuckle. So it, it, there's a lot of work that needs to be done there between uh, revegetating the site, but also controlling invasive species. Um, and fortunately, we also secured an AmeriCorps team this past spring uh, and if, if you're unfamiliar with AmeriCorps, um, they essentially have teams of young adults who are placed in different areas throughout the country on relatively short-term assignments uh, to work with local groups there to um, do pretty much anything. For us, it was a lot of environmental related work, like invasive species control, um, planting and they even did some data collection for the U.S. Forest Service up in Delaware County. Uh, but we were really fortunate to have them. They got, they allowed us to do way more at this site and a lot of other sites than we uh, ever otherwise would have. So you can advance to the next slide. Uh, th this is an overview of that Delco site um, showing you where it is. And you can go to the next slide for a close up of the aerial. Uh, so you can see Delco's uh, plant to the left of 315 there, and to the right of that, between 315 and the old Tangi, is the floodplain property. Um, you can go to the next slide. 
these are just pictures of the process essentially. Uh, in the fall, last fall, we had about 2,000 bare root trees that Preservation Parks actually planted with us. They had this um, implement uh, that gets towed by a tractor that allows them to plant essentially about 2,000 trees in one day. Uh, so they did all that for us, which is great. And we continue to follow up with some supplemental plantings and like I mentioned, invasive species control. So right here, the, the larger trees to the right, you can see the understory, everything that has leaves is pretty much honeysuckle. Um, and fortunately, a large chunk of that has already been removed thanks to AmeriCorps and several other flow volunteers. So we are, like I said, continuing to work on that um, and find new projects and do continue doing restoration work throughout the watershed. Uh, so I'll finish off by thanking the original steering committee of the green the green space planning effort. Um, it's a pretty monumental effort that involved a lot of different people. So thank you and thank That's you, great. Laura. Thanks, Jim. I mean, this is so fascinating, but it's it's the problem is a big problem, but we have a lot of people power to help out and to get the word out there, what you all are doing and bringing in new volunteers and retaining volunteers and working with non other nonprofits, working with foundations, working with governments to really make a difference to kind of to stem that the tide of uh, degradation and actually restore the Olentangy. And it's, you know, there's that saying a death by a thousand cuts. And I know a lot of times with our watersheds, we kind of see that, but it's also, um, you know, healing by a thousand, a thousand heels, <laughs> band-aids. <laughs> but um, uh, with that, and it, it can seem overwhelming, but with groups like you all out there, uh, it's a great way for people to get involved and to do tree plantings, do litter cleanups. Uh, you know, maybe, it, maybe a viewer out there is uh, working for an organization or a company that wants to get more involved and do kind of like a company wide like tree planting somewhere. Maybe you all are a good group for them to connect with. Um, so if anybody has questions that are watching, go ahead and um, type it into the chat feature. Or if you're on Facebook, uh, go ahead and write it in the comment section and we'll get to that. I know we're a little bit over time here, but I want to give uh, folks an opportunity to ask questions if they have it. Um, one question I have, and this is totally at the, you know, the 30,000 foot view, but like, how did the Olentangy get its name? Where does that word come from? Uh, <clears throat> this is a very confusing topic and uh, some of our map makers from early on uh, messed up some of the names. Uh, the Olentangy is actually uh, it's supposed to be called whetstone, I believe, uh, if we translated the Indian name correctly, but some of the map makers uh, rearranged things. So. Gotcha. Uh, there's well, a history on our webpage about that. Uh, oh, cool. People want to know. Well, I mean, flow has such a nice flow to it, right? <laughs> Friends of the Laurel, Laurel and Tangy Watershed. So at least, they, you know, that's going for you. That's cool. Um, so I don't see any uh, questions. I do see some folks thanking uh, both Laura and Jim, and I want to thank them as well for taking the time out of their day on a Friday, nonetheless, uh, to talk to folks about uh, their efforts. And can you uh, let us know your website again? Uh, org. Great. So folks can check uh, check them out. We also I do want to give one uh, final plug to um, we have one more green spot conversations coming up. It's going to be on August 5th from noon to 1245. It's with Green Columbus uh, and we're going to be talking with Klaus Eckhart about their efforts that they're doing uh, here in, in Columbus. So uh, for those watching, thank you for being a part of this and enjoy your weekend and uh, get out there and take a look at the old.